us pray together father in the name of jesus i thank you for the joyful people I thank you for the victorious people. I thank you for inspired people. I thank you, Lord, for being here tonight. And I pray, Lord, you will impact every life in Jesus' name. Everyone here, every brother, every sister, every leader, every worker, I pray we will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Impact every life. Inject everyone inspire everyone that from this very day your power will be moving us on and i pray that you break every yoke destroy every work of the devil that all these are beloved brothers and sisters nothing will hinder your progress in jesus name confirm your mighty power in everybody's life in jesus name we pray God bless everyone. We're looking at Matthew chapter 3. And I'm reading from verses 11 and 12. Matthew chapter 3, verses 11 and 12. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you. I said he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, and he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. As we look at those two verses of scripture, we are very familiar with the word baptism. There's baptism of water. There's baptism in the spirit. When you are baptized, you are immersed into the water. When you are baptized in the water, that is water baptism, the minister will take you and then dip you into the water, totally submerge you, and the water will cover you. And your whole body will experience the presence of that water. But now, we come to the baptism. In the Holy Spirit, the word baptism is still the same. It's bapto in the Greek. It means to deep. It means to immerse. It means to submerge you. It means to envelop you in the Holy Ghost. And it says, I, John, I baptize you with water unto repentance. But he, referring to Christ, he, referring to our Savior, he, referring to our sanctifier, he is our baptizer too. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And then it says, with fire. There are many believers that understand, and maybe they have experienced the baptism in the Holy Ghost. It is the fire part of it they never consider. But you see, if you are cold, you need the fire. You are lukewarm, you need that fire. You are lethargic. You need that fire. You are slumbering. You need that fire. Or you are apathetic. Nothing drives you. Nothing moves you. Nothing makes you enthusiastic. And you are not excited. You work, but you work slowly. You try to labor, but you labor sluggishly. You need fire. And that fire is coming upon your soul. There are people who are emotionless. There's no emotion. They do what they do. They do their preaching. They do their witnessing. They do their soul winning. They do everything. You cannot see any emotion on them. They're not excited. But you see, when you look at people on the football field, sometimes just 12 people here, another 12 people here, then they kick that thing that has a surround and only has air inside, and everybody is jumping up and down, and then you see the people at the stadium, 50,000 people, 60,000 people, and somebody just kicking something, kick there and kick there, and the people are so excited, and they shout, and you will see they bring all their energy into the football field, but no church people, 
cool, they are cold, they are lethargic, they are lukewarm, they are sluggish, they are sleeping, and nothing interests them. But that's why we need the fire. That we must be excited about the gospel more than the people at the stadium about football. Even when they don't go to the stadium and they have that, that terminal screen there on the side of the road and they all gather there when the, the football match is going on, you see the excitement. And then you are wondering if the people of God could become excited. And thank God I'm excited. I said, I'm excited. If we can drive away the cold and the lukewarmness, and then the gospel gets into us, and then we begin to share that gospel. We share that gospel with power. We share that gospel with excitement. We share that gospel with fervency. Many people are going to come to know the Lord. That's why it says we must be baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That means we're surrounded with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That means we're enveloped with the Holy Ghost and with power. That means that we're baptized, we're immersed into the Holy Ghost and also into fire. You see, we are now having end of time harvest. And Jesus said, at the time of the end, just before he comes, he says, the love of many shall wash us. The love of many shall wash cold because iniquity shall abound. And because of that abounding iniquity, that's why the love of many was cold. But when the fire comes, and the fire is coming, when the power comes, and the power is coming, when the Holy Ghost comes, and the Holy Ghost is coming, and then he baptizes us, he immerses us, he deeps us, he fills us, not only with the Holy Ghost, but with fire, something will change. And tonight, it will change your life. I said tonight, it will change your life. It will keep you, now you've heard, when they say somebody's on fire. Somebody's on fire. He's been baptized in the Holy Ghost and baptized in fire. And then they say, that person who is on fire is burning and shining for Christ. That burning and shining will come in your life. And then he is fervent. And he does everything he does. He prays with fervency. He preaches with fervency. He witnesses with fervency. Everything about him is fervent. And then he's passionate. Passionate. You see, that's what the Holy Ghost fire, that's what it does in our lives. He's glowing. He goes, he grows, and then he glows because he's beaming with that fire of the Holy Ghost. He's charged. And he's charging. That's the fire of the Holy Ghost. And then he's on the go. He is on the move and is zealous. I'm talking to you tonight on baptized workers on a sacred mission. Baptized workers on a sacred mission. You see what John the Baptist already said. That I'm baptizing you with water unto repentance. But he, he that comes is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. When that happens, look at the result. We're looking at Psalm 104. Psalm 104. And I'm reading here from verse 4. Who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flaming fire. His ministers a flaming fire. He'll do it for you. I said he'll do it for you. You see, where there is fire, all those insects cannot remain. When there is fire, all those cockroaches, they cannot be crawling in and crawling out of your life. When there is fire, all those things that you say, this one is crawling, that one is crawling, that one is disturbing me, the fire will burn everything up in Jesus' name. And it says, when the Holy Ghost comes, and when the fire of the Spirit and the power of the Spirit, when everything comes to your life, it says it makes his ministers a flaming fire or a flame of fire. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Here we're reading from verse 1. The day when that power came on them. The day when the Pentecost happened in their lives. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 1. It says in verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Your own day has come. 
they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly everybody shout suddenly and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were seated and they appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of tell me clothing tongues like as of fire and it sat upon tell me each of them clothing, clothing tongues like as of fire sat upon each of them no wonder those people were fiery. No wonder those people were passionate. No wonder those people were enthusiastic. No wonder those people were fervent. If you saw them preaching, or if you saw them before the Pharisees, before the Sadducees, or you saw them before the Sanhedrin, the power came out and the fire came out because the fire sat on each of them. And you know, you tell me you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. I say, don't talk, don't talk. Let me say the fire in your life and the fire is coming if the holy ghost power has come then the fire comes and then you see in verse 3 it talks about the wind and then in verse 3 it talks about the fire have you noticed that if there is fire especially bush, bush fire when the fire is burning and then the wind comes and then blows it that wind will blow the fire everywhere and then everything that is combustible inflammable everything will burn up and there's something going to burn up today. Yeah. I said there's something going to burn up today. Yeah. I come back to Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. And I'm reading here now from verse, I'm reading from verse 12. Was fine, is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge his flow and gather the wheat into the canal. But it will burn off, burn up what? The chaff. With unquenchable fire. You'll understand that as we go on. We're talking on baptized workers on a secret mission. Baptized workers on a secret mission. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, instructed workers baptized with the Spirit's fire. Instructed workers baptized with the Spirit's fire. Number two, Inherited waste burnt continually by supernatural fire. Inherited waste that's the chaff, that's the seed, the grain inherited. It came with it. And if you're going to make use of that wheat, you will thresh that grain, and the chaff will go apart, and that chaff becomes waste. And it is that chaff, now the Lord burns with fire. And as any other kind of waste or chaff comes to your life, while the fire of the Holy Ghost is burning, it will be burning off the chaff every time. You are going to be more useful. Inherited waste burnt continually by supernatural fire. Number three, inspired witnesses. That's me. I said, that's me. Inspired witnesses burning with sacred flame. Inspired witnesses burning with sacred flame. We come to number one. Number one, tell me your number one then. Instructed workers baptized with the Spirit's fire. We're looking at Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 16. Luke chapter 3, we're looking at verse 16. Very similar to what we read in Matthew. But it's good because, um, you know, the scripture has repeated it. The Holy Ghost has repeated it. And so, it's good to read it. Luke chapter 3, we're looking at it from verse 16. John answered saying, unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water. But one mightier than I cometh is here today. The lashet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Tell me the rest. Our fire. Here is John telling us. And here is Luke recording the repetition of what Matthew has already said. Because out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the truth shall be confirmed and affirmed. 
and he says he'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost not only with the Holy Ghost he'll baptize you with fire whose fire and verse 17 is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his flow and will gather the wheat into the Ghana but the chaff will he burn with fire unquenchable I don't say if you look at uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 when the experience first came and it came upon Peter and came upon John and came upon Matthew and came upon Andrew and the rest of the apostles you will see the manifestation of that fire one it came on them visible in their own case and then after that we could see the explanation we could see the demonstration we could see the manifestation in their lives you could see that these people they were on fire you know before jesus christ went away while jesus christ was still with them they were sometimes argumentative and they were sometimes very slow and many times sometimes the lord jesus will say oh is it you didn't understand what i was telling you and then sometimes they say are we going to that place again because that's the place that you know they almost told you are we going there again but as you come to the acts of the apostles all that chaff had been burnt away they became fiery and they became fervent they became passionate they became zealous they became unstoppable unbeatable unconquerable and when this fire comes upon your life you will be unstoppable you will be unconquerable and nobody will be able to beat you back from what the lord has called you to acts of the apostles chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 1 again and when the day of pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place no argument again one accord sanctification had come and there was no big eye and little you no canal comparison anymore all in one place in the same time one accord and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting i'm going to read that verse again and suddenly there is coming a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it's going to fill all this house where we are sitting and then it goes on to say and there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire and it sat on each of them and it sat on each of them and there is no exception there is no partiality what this one had that other one had what the brothers had the sisters had everybody had that fire coming upon them i see it on you already and you'll be you'll become a different man and a different woman even from today in jesus name and let's look at you know somebody you recognize his name is peter you remember when jesus christ was betrayed and a little girl came and said yeah one of them he said no no i'm not there another one came and said i i see the way you even talk even your speech betrays you i told you i'm not there and then another person came and said you must be one of them he began to curse i, I don't know what you're talking about he was afraid when the fire came all the fear was burnt off in your life all that fear of man will be burnt up your life all that sluggishness will be burnt up you will be on fire for god on fire for christ and you will do something you had never done before in jesus name look at verse 14 verse 14 and but peter standing up with the 11 lifted up his voice and said unto them ye men of judah and all ye that dwell at jerusalem be this known unto you and hearken to my words was he ashamed now you'll not be ashamed anymore was he afraid now you'll not be afraid anymore was he cold and lukewarm no coldness is vanishing away was well, he reserved? I don't want to talk. I don't want them to know it's me here, one of his disciples. Was well, he like that? All that chaff will burn off from your life. And then he tells us, look at verse 22. In verse 22, then he said, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him 
in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know and then he went on by the time he finished his message look as verse 36 therefore let all the house of israel know assuredly that god has made that same jesus whom ye have crucified both lord and christ now when they heard this they were preached in their hearts and he said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? That message had an impact. And your message will have impact. It came to them and they said, men and brethren, we want to repent. Sinners will tell you, we want to repent. We want to change. We want to be transformed. We want to be converted. What shall we do? Look at verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the holy ghost for the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call and with many other words did he testify and exhort saying save yourselves from this unto a generation then they that Galilee received his word were baptized and the same day the same day only one day there were added unto them about how many people here three thousand souls and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and prayers and in breaking of bread and then in prayers you see because the message was fiery they were not listening to him and sleeping they were not listening to him and you know talking nobody could be talking when peter was preaching because of the fire of the holy ghost it is coming upon our leaders it's coming upon our coordinators coming upon our pastors and coming upon our women too and by the grace of god all of us are going to become fiery in the ministry of the lord in jesus name now you must understand the holy ghost is connected very much with our experiences number one we're born of the spirit born of the spirit you see when you are born again it's the holy ghost that comes to convict you of sin it's the holy ghost that comes to say hi about this hi about this hi about this it's the holy ghost that comes to get you converted and then you pray you confess your sins and then you are born again and it is the spirit of god that bears witness with your heart that we are children of god number two you are built up by the spirit born of the spirit then you are built by the spirit you see when you read your bible it's the holy ghost that brings understanding enlightenment it's the holy ghost that comes to teach you and to guide you into all truth and you are committed unto the scriptures which is able to build you up until the final day and then you are born of the spirit you are built up by the spirit you are baptized in the spirit baptized in the spirit immersed in the spirit enveloped in the spirit deep into the spirit surrounded by the spirit and the fire comes number four you are born in with the spirit you are born in with the spirit there's something in you that says i want to tell my neighbor i want to tell my friend i want to tell my colleague i want to tell my classmate i want to tell my community because the spirit of god makes you born look at john chapter 5 john chapter 5 we're looking at verse 15 at verse 35 john chapter 5 verse 35 before i read this verse you must remember that john was filled with the holy ghost from the mother's womb in fact that was a special family Zechariah filled with the holy ghost elizabeth the mother filled with the holy ghost and now the son john the baptist filled with the holy ghost look at the testimony concerning him he tells us in john chapter 5 verse 35 he was a burning and a shining light it was a burning and a shining light and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light and so we understand then that number one you are born of the spirit number two you are built up by the spirit number three you are baptized in the spirit number four you are born in with the spirit number five you are burdened by the spirit burdened by the spirit you see there are some people they say they are born again they're children of god 
They have no body. They have no body for souls. They have no body for evangelism. They see people going up and down and dying at their side. There's no body in them. There are friends, there are classmates, there are schoolmates, there are colleagues, there are community people. They see them going up and down. They sell in the same market, they school in the same school, and they do everything together. There's no body in their hearts. When the Holy Ghost comes, you are burdened by the Spirit. And then number six, you are born along. That born is B-O-R-N-E, carried. You are carried along. You are swept along. You are driven along by the Spirit of the Lord. It's like the Spirit of God moving you. And you are gathering speed. You are gathering momentum because the Spirit's power and the Spirit's fire is within you. It's like, you know, the, the train, uh, those days, they used to put a fire and a coal, charcoal, into a particular place in that train. And while that train is moving, the fire is burning. And there's a particular water there and the steam is driving on the train borne along by the fire of that engine the same thing the Holy Ghost will come upon you the power will come upon your life and the fire will be burning and you are born along by the spirit and then number seven you are begetting by the spirit begetting begetting you beget others that means you cause them to be born again look at that in philemon chapter one only one chapter philemon and i'm reading here from verse 10 philemon just verse 10 it says i beseech you for my son onesimus whom i have begotten whom I have begotten in my bonds. And it is the power of the Spirit in your life that gets that done. You will do it. And when that Holy Ghost comes upon you, you'll be on the go, you'll be on the move, and then you will preach the gospel. And it will not be like, you know, somebody has to remind you, somebody has to push you, somebody has to drag you, somebody has to draw you, and somebody has to compel you. There is a, there's a compelling force, a compelling power from within you. You will do it because you are born in, in the Spirit. We're looking in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verse 4. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 4 it says therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere what were they doing? preaching the word they went everywhere preaching the word and that is what you will do and that same power will work in your life and you'll preach the word in Jesus name I want you to understand that all those people in the New Testament Acts of the Apostles in particular the Holy Ghost came upon, came upon them and the Holy Ghost came within them and the fire came upon them and the fire was inside them and it kept burning every time. And so they were being propelled along and they were being driven along and they were preaching the gospel everywhere. It was like unstoppable. It was like uncontrollable. It was like something you couldn't, you couldn't uh, uh, contain. It was just within them driving them on. I believe for you that day has come for you. The power will come inside you. The Holy Ghost will come inside you. And the fire will burn inside you in Jesus' name. Look at Acts chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 17. Acts chapter 9 verse 17. And as went its way and entered into the house. I don't want you to miss that word. Went his way. And as went his way. And as went his way. And then he laid hands on Saul. And Saul became the greatest, the greatest apostle that ever lived. Look at chapter 10. Chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 23. Chapter 10 verse 23. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow Peter went away with them. That's the word underline that word went, went. Where the Holy Ghost is, people are always going. They're always moving. And they're always reaching out to the person beyond them. And it was when he got to the house of Cornelius, as he was speaking like this, the Holy Ghost came upon them. It will repeat in your life. Acts chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 1. Acts chapter 14, we're looking at verse 1. They went, they went, you are going. I said you will go. 
chapter 14 verse 1 and it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so speak they went and so speak they went and so speak you see that as they went they were not just going and then keeping quiet there are some believers that say well my life will tell the story they will see I'm a Christian as I go and I don't steal with them I don't drink with them I don't fight with them I don't do this I don't do that the holiness in me will be preaching the message quite uh -uh. the early church did not do it like that they went and they preached they went and they testified they went and they spoke and the same thing we're going to do we go and we're going to preach am I talking to somebody there today you will preach in Jesus name Hey, look at this and it says and they so speak that a great multitude uh, both of the Jews and also of the Gentiles believed let's look at verse 2 but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren or oh, because of that persecution did they stop I said did they stop you see, that's how you know those who have the fire inside them. You see, the people of the world, they have the fire of Satan. They have the fervency of Satan. They have the flame of Satan. And they try to stop the people of God. But the fire of the Holy Ghost is greater. The fire of the Holy Spirit is greater. When those people that have the fire of Satan inside them, when they try to stop you, say, you don't know anything. I have a greater fire inside me. Somebody there, I have a greater fire inside me. I said, I have the greater fire inside me. Look at verse 3. After that uh, kind of opposition, it says, Long time, therefore. Long time, therefore. Therefore, long time, about they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Your sign will come. This week, as you go out in the power of the Holy Ghost, as you go out in the fire of the Holy Ghost, and you lay hands on people, they will recover. And you cast out devils, you're not the one talking, it's a fire inside you that is talking. And when you speak, and fire comes out, invisible but real, invisible but definite, and that fire comes with your word, all those evil spirits are cast away in Jesus' name. If truly we are baptized with the Holy Ghost, we shall be on fire for the Lord. We'll be zealous. We'll be fervent. We'll be preaching passionately. And we will be reaching out and we'll be evangelizing. Let's come back to Matthew chapter 3. I'm coming to point number 2 now. Inherited waste, burnt with supernatural fire. Inherited waste, burnt with supernatural fire we're looking at uh, matthew chapter 3 matthew chapter 3 and we're reading from verses 11 and 12. matthew chapter 3 we're reading from verse 11 i did baptize you who is the you here i did baptize you with water unto repentance but he he that cometh after me who is that Jesus Christ is my chair and I whose shoes are not worthy to bear. He shall baptize. I said he shall baptize. I said he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and will tell me our fire. I want you to emphasize that in your mind. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. We need that fire because for a long time we'll be staying there sin and baptize and baptize and baptize. But the fire element of it is coming upon you today. Whose fan is in the sand? And he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather the witch into the garner, and he will burn up. The chaff with what? Unquenchable fire. Let's come to Luke and read that same thing. In Luke chapter 3, Luke chapter 3, and we're looking at verses 16 and 17. The same thing, but we need to have this read because it's in the scriptures that way. Luke chapter 3, verse 16. John answered, saying, 
unto them, unto them all, I did baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh. The lashes of whose shoes have not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into the garner. But the chaff, but the chaff, but the chaff, he will burn with fire unquenchable. Then that what chaff there appears different times in the Bible and in the New Testament look at this is saying that there is chaff in people's life chaff is not seen chaff is not poisonous it just that it is valueless it's worthless it doesn't have any food value that's why the farmers will thresh the grain and thresh the seed and then all the chaff will be blown away and then they'll get the they'll get the seed it's just like rice it has some shell behind it when they thresh it like that all the shells will go out the same thing with wheat and other things like that that chaff is the skin covering uh, the seed that is separated from the seed. It is the useless debris, the useless debris from uh, the threshed grain. Uh, that seed, the chaff then becomes uh, like something uh, comparatively worthless, something worthless, something not sinful, not sinful, something just worthless. It's like a refuse. It's like a trash. It's like junk. And it is like litter. It's like drawers. It's like an unnecessary material. We call them scraps to be discarded. That's why it's called waste. Inherited waste. That the Holy Ghost is going to burn away from your life. He will burn it. I said it will burn it. As we look at the fire burning the chaff, there are actually three perspectives of that kind of uh, what's fire burning the chaff. Number one, there is a prophetic perpetual fulfillment. A prophetic perpetual fulfillment. When it says he'll burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. Number two, there is personal purifying fulfillment. That is, the Holy and when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, then the chaff in your life, the thing that is useless, the thing that is worthless, and the thing is not sinful. It's not sinful. It's just the useless matter. And it's just the unprofitable matter. It's just the valueless matter that the fire of the Holy Ghost will come and burn. It will burn it away from your life today. Somebody there said he'll burn it away from your life today. Number one is the prophetic perpetual fulfillment. Number two is the personal purifying fulfillment. Number three is the present Pentecostal fulfillment. Your own day has come. Your own time has come. It will be born away from your life in Jesus' name. Look at number one, the prophetic perpetual fulfillment. When it says the fire will burn the chaff. And then when it burns that chaff, it makes you more useful to the Lord. Malachi chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 1. Malachi chapter 3. We're looking at verse 1. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, the Lord whom ye seek, is coming today. I mean, it's coming to your life. Shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come. Says the Lord of us. Look at verse 2. But who shall ab who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, like the fuller's soul. And he shall siege as a refiner with that fire and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. That's prophetic. It's still the time, the time to come. When the Lord will do that, when he comes upon the house of Israel and then all the sons of Levi, they'll come before him and he'll be like a refiner. Every chaff in their lives, 
every useless thing in their lives, every worthless thing in their lives, the fire will burn it and then they'll be able to offer to the Lord an offering acceptable unto the Lord. And then it says that fire is unquenchable. That is, it keeps on burning and burning and burning so that as the chaff is coming in, the fire is burning. Chaff comes, it burns. Chaff comes, it burns because it's unquenchable. We're looking at uh, Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, and we're looking at uh, verse 43. In the future, that unquenchable fire becomes the fire of judgment upon the people that do not repent because it will burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. We're looking at chapter 9 of Mark, verse 43. It says, And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. That's future, that's prophetic uh, for the people that do not repent. Let's look at now the second one when it says it will burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. The second meaning of that is personal purifying fire personal purifying fire there's a fulfillment here is coming upon your life somebody that said it's coming upon your life isaiah chapter 6 isaiah chapter 6 we're looking at it from verse 5 let me remind you that isaiah had been a preacher a prophet and from chapter 1 he preached Chapter 2, he preached. And chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, he's been preaching. And here comes chapter 6. And he saw the vision of the holiness of God, of the glory of God, of the exaltation of God. As the angels were crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. And then he suddenly realized the chaff in his life. The chaff in his life. Look at it from verse 5, chapter 6, verse 5. Then said I, woe is me. For I am undone, because I am a man of unclean leaves, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean leaves. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongues from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. That's the fire there, that's the fire there that came to purge him, that came to purify him, that came to sanctify him, that came to burn up the chaff in his life. Also, I heard. The voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Tell me out loud, Here am I, send me. Can you say that again? Can you say that for the last time? Here am I, send me. When the fire comes and it burns the chaff away from your life, worthless things, useless things, unprofitable things, valueless things, it burns them away. When you are converted, when you are born again, the blood of Jesus washed you and cleansed you and took your sins away. But you know, uh, there are some people, they are born again, but they talk too much. They are born again, but they are still bearing too much. They are born again, but they sleep too much. They are born again, but they are lazy a lot. They are born again, but they can't read the Bible as they ought to read the Bible. They are born again, but they are not up and doing in the work of the Lord. There are some useless, useless chaff in their life, and then the fire will come and burn everything away. And then all the talk, 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 everything is gone. You put that to evangelism into praying you put that into reaching out for souls and your life will never be the same again in jesus name isaiah chapter 1 i'm reading from verse 25 isaiah chapter 1 we're reading from verse 25 it says in verse 25 and i will turn my hand upon thee and and, and purely purge away the draws, thy draws, and take away thy team, and I will restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, 
and the faithful city. When those things, useless, worthless things are burnt up, when those unprofitable things are burnt up by the fire of the Holy Ghost, they'll be called the city of the defeatful city. We're coming to number three now. That is the present Pentecostal fulfillment. When John said, I be baptized with water unto repentance, there is one mightier than I is coming. He will burn, he will baptize you of the Holy Ghost and with fire. And then he has his furnace and he thoroughly purge his floor and he will burn the chaff away with some quenchable fire. It's fulfilled in Pentecost. It's fulfilled in your baptism in the Holy Ghost. If it has not happened, it's going to happen today. If it has happened before, but then some chaff is coming back, the fire will come again and burn them off from your life in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. I'm reading from verses 2 and 3. Acts chapter 2. And we're looking at verses 2 and 3. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it sat and it filled all the house where they were sitting and and they appeared unto them cloving tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them and it will sit upon each of you and it will come upon each of you you become fervent and you become irresistible and you become unstoppable in Jesus' name. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And we shall all be filled with the Holy Ghost. Brothers and sisters filled with the Holy Ghost. Young and old filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them Utterance. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1, and we're reading from verse 7. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 7. And of the angels said he, who maketh his angel spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. His ministers a flame of fire. Any minister here today? His ministers a flame of fire. Any minister sure that's a minister there today? And it makes his ministers a flame of fire. You'll be fiery. You'll be passionate. You'll be zealous. And that thing will stir you up from the inside in Jesus' name. And all the chaff will be burnt away from your life. Welcome to point number three. Inspired witnesses born in with sacred flame. Inspired witnesses born in with sacred flame flame. You see, the Lord has called us to be witnesses, but he wants us to burn with the flame and the fire and the fervency and the passion of the Holy Ghost. In, uh, in uh, Luke chapter 24, Luke chapter 24, I'm reading here from verse 27. Luke chapter 24, reading from verse 27. It says in verse 27, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them all the scriptures, the thing, in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. That's the Lord Jesus Christ talking to two people on the way to Emmaus. And when he was talking to them, they didn't recognize him at all. They didn't know that this was the Christ they were thinking about and talking about and, and desiring to see that he was risen. He just uh, you know, took them from the Old Testament in the law and in the prophets and he said things to them concerning what will happen to him about his death, about his burial and about his resurrection. Look at their testimony in verse 32. Verse 32. And he said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures you see that when jesus spoke the word when he explained to them and expounded the word unto them their heart was burning they couldn't understand it was convincing them it was convicting them it was warming them up and it was like fire stored up in their bones and he said didn't our hearts burn when he spoke to us by the way and he expounded the scriptures unto us when the fire comes upon you you, your words will be like that. And then look at the result in verse 33. And they rose up the same hour. You see, the word had an effect, had an impact, had an influence on them. And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together. And them 
that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed. And he has appeared unto Simon. And they told what things were, uh, they were done in the way and how he was made known unto them in the breaking of bread. Verse 36, And as they thus speak, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. You see, when, when they had the word, because it came from the heart of Jesus, heart filled with the Holy Ghost, empowered, inspired by the Holy Ghost, it was burning in their hearts. And when Jesus opened their eyes and they saw that this is Christ, they couldn't stay. They couldn't say. They, they responded immediately and they left and they went to tell other people, we've seen him, you will see him. We recognize him, you recognize him because the power now worked in them. And while they were talking, Jesus appeared and he says, I'm the Jesus you are talking about. And when you preach or the fire of the Holy Ghost in your life, then as you are finishing the preaching like this, the Lord will appear to those people. He will convict them. He will convince them. He will lead them in the way they ought to go. Hey, let's look at Job, Job. We're looking at chapter 32. Job chapter 32. And I'm reading here from verse 18. Job chapter 32. And we're reading from verse 18. It says, But I am full of matter. The spirit within me constraineth me. You see that? When you're full of the Holy Ghost and then you have the word inside you, you're you are storing it up, you're learning it, you're preparing it, you're memorizing it, and the time comes to talk to people, you say, I am full of matter. You'll be full of matter. Good matter. Spiritual matter. Life-changing matter. And life-changing message. I am full of matter. And the spirit within me constraineth me. Behold, my belly is as wine, which has no vent. And it is ready to burst like new bottles. I will speak. I will speak. I will speak. That I may be refreshed. I will open my lips and answer you see, uh, many people, uh, they, they appear to know scripture. They appear to know the Bible. If you were talking to them one-on-one, -on -one, and then you say, what's uh, Genesis chapter 32 verse 26? Oh, they, they'll tell you. And then you say, what is uh, Exodus chapter 12 verses 12 and 13? They will tell you. And then you say, what's Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11? They will tell you. But they never tell other people. They never open their mouths because there's no fire to push that thing out. They are not stirred up from within and it's not like it's bottled inside them and you say i must speak i will speak from today that fire will come upon you yeah. you will speak i said you will speak yeah. where are you there you speak the word and the word will have power in the lives of the people in jesus name Maybe somebody there is saying, I will not be a worker again. I, you know, I do this. It's not appreciated. I do that. It's not appreciated. He doesn't have the fire. He said, she doesn't have the fire. Let me show you. In, a, in a Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 20. If you have the fire, that fire will burn. Uh, did you don't understand uh, how many of you still uh, use uh, okay you may not want to raise up your hand but i'll talk i'll talk anyhow some people use kettle and then that kettle they put water inside and then there is a uh, fire underneath that kettle are you getting my point uh, sisters are you getting my point you think i don't know how to cook i used to cook no, you have that fire underneath and then when the thing is boiling when the thing is boiling that lead, the one you put on that kettle as it's the fire is burning the water is boiling that lead will fly off and uh, the same thing the same thing when you have that matter inside you or you have that matter inside you and the holy ghost is there and the holy ghost is burning like it's going to burn from today then that thing you are closing your mouth i will not talk you will talk I will not preach, you will preach. I will not pray, you will pray. Look at uh, Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah chapter 20. I'm looking at verse 9. Then said I, I will not make mention of him. No speak anymore in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire. Shut up in my bones. And I was weary of forbearing and I could not stay. 
you will rise you will speak you will testify you will witness because that thing will be like fire inside you and the only ghost will say that's a sinner there talk to him that's a sinner here talk to him and that's somebody backslider there talk to them and as you are talking like this the fire will burn in their heart and then they will write they will say what can i do now you say repent and give your life to the lord jesus christ multitudes multitudes are going to be converted through you in jesus name i'm looking at jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 29 jeremiah chapter 23 and we're reading from verse 29 it says in verse 29 it's not my word like as a fire it's not my word like as a fire says the lord and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces and that word is inside you right now that word will not uh, will not stay without coming out it will come out it will stir you up. The Holy Ghost will stir you up. And then you'll be able to say, by the grace of God, I'm full of power, I'm full of fire. And I'm going to speak out. And more teachers will know the Lord in Jesus' name. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. And I'm reading from verse 16. Acts chapter 17 and we're looking at verse 16 it says now while paul waited for them at athens his spirit was touched in him his spirit was touched in him hey, you're a child of god you're born again you're a child of god you're saved and sanctified you're a child of god you are baptized in the holy ghost and in fire and you see the people just walking and down walking up and down and then something is saying inside you are they born again where are they going if they die tonight where will they spend eternity and then something is turning up in you and then somebody is coming your way and is saying young man why are you standing here and he wants to be talking just just to just a while away the time and something is saying inside you if this person died today where will he spend eternity and the thing stirs up in you you open your mouth to begin to talk on the road on the street right there that person will be born again because it says now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore, 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 disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. It's now your turn. What was he telling them? Look at verse 30. What, what was telling them in verse 30? Because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained, whereof he has given assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead. Because now in verse 30, the times of this ignorance, God winked out. But now, Commanders, how many people? All men, where? Everywhere. To do what? To repent. Supernatural fire is coming upon your life. The sacred flame is coming upon your life. It will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I said it will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That will produce in us purifying effect. It will produce in us a propelling effect. It will produce in us a penetrating effect when the Holy Ghost comes and the fire burns in your heart and burns in your soul. There's a purifying effect. There's a propelling effect. You will not be able to stay in one place and say, well, uh, souls are perishing, but that's not my concern. You'll be concerned. Propelling effect. A penetrating effect. When you speak the word, it will penetrate their hearts. A perpetual effect. Perpetual. Perpetual. Every day. You wake up in the morning. Thank God for what was done yesterday. Thank God for the souls that were rich yesterday. Thank God for the people that came to know the Lord the other time. But today, there's a perpetual effect there's going to be a powerful effect because it shall receive power after the holy ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses on him both in jerusalem judea and samaria to the uttermost part of the earth a purifying effect as a fire a propelling effect as a fire a penetrating effect as a fire a, per a perpetual effect as a fire a powerful effect as a fire a pricking effect a pricking effect as peter finished speaking 
scale like this, their hearts were preached. Their hearts were preached. It was pungent. And therefore they said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter told them, Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the gift is unto you and to your children and to many that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. It will have a pricking effect. It will have a productive effect. A productive effect because as they finished speaking like this, they gave their lives to the Lord and how many thousands were converted on that one day? 3,000 people were converted. It will have such an effect. The question now is the promise has been given. I baptize so with water unto repentance but he that is mightier than I is here. Where two or three are gathered in my name there I will be in the midst of them. Is Jesus here now? Is he by your side there? I said, you see, by your side there, over there is Jesus by your side. If Jesus is there, he that is mightier than there, he comes. And he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And then with unquenchable fire, every chaff will be burnt away from your life. Tonight is that night. I said, tonight is that night. The Holy Ghost has come. I said, the Holy Ghost has come. He comes with power. He comes with fire. He comes with anointing. He comes with enthusiasm with seal. He comes with passion. He's saying, if you don't want to remain cold anymore, lethargic anymore, if you don't want to remain lukewarm anymore, if you don't want to remain sluggish anymore, if you don't want to be sleeping anymore, but you want to wake up and you want that power in your life right now, he's here. I said, he's here. If you are there, I said he's here. If you are ready, I said he's here. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Rise up and tell the Lord, I need that baptism. I need that immersion. I need that power. I need that fire. I need that anointing. I need that unction. Let him do it. Let him do it. Let him do it. He will baptize you. He will baptize you. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. With the Holy Ghost and with fire. With the Holy Ghost and with fire. He said, his fan is in his hand. He will gather the wheat into the Ghana and then he'll He'll burn the chaff, he'll burn the waste, he'll burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. Let that fire burn today. Let that fire burn today. Let that fire burn today. It's yours. It's yours. The promise is unto you. The promise is unto you and to your children and to many that are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. He'll baptize you. He will baptize you. He will immerse you. He will envelope you. He will surround you with the Holy Ghost and with fire.